Hi, I'm Kelly Rowlett Presgrave. I'm president and CEO of Work With Your Hands, and we are so proud to be a sponsor of Power Women of the Trades podcast. You can reach us at workwithyourhands.com. Kelly at workwithyourhands.com is my email. At Relentless Digital, we believe in breaking barriers and driving innovation. That's why we are extremely proud to sponsor the Power Women of the Trades podcast, supporting the voices and success of women in the home service industry. Together, we're creating a future where talent shines regardless of gender and diversity thrives. Join our journey at relentless-digital.com and always be relentless in your pursuit of excellence. This episode of Power Women of the Trades is also brought to you by Forrest Perry of Forrest Perry Digital Marketing. Want to generate more leads for your service business? Trust his team to deliver quality new customer leads and protect your brand online. Check out perrymarketing.com today. Welcome to Power Women of the Trades podcast. This show is all about breaking barriers and changing the game. Our guests will feature some of today's most successful female entrepreneurs and other advocates of our industry as well. Because if there's one thing we know for sure, Female-led entrepreneurship drives change on multiple levels. We want to empower women in the trade industry like you so you can maximize your potential, stay balanced, achieve long-term success, and claim ownership over your life. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to Power Women of the Trades podcast with Cassie and Heather. Hello. Today, uh, today we are with Logan Marshall with Blue On. Super excited to introduce you guys to Logan and Blue On if you're not familiar and all the, the cool, fun things that come with that. So, hey, yeah. Logan. How, hey, Logan. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks for having me. It uh, feels like we haven't seen each other in forever. Maybe I know. <laughs> yeah, like just a few days ago and maybe next week. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Hopefully. We'll Hopefully. see. What we're so, um, Blue On, Heather and I talking about Blue On earlier. And then if you're not familiar with Blue On, we'll get to that in a little bit about that. But who's Logan Marshall? Ooh, that's a loaded question. So I'm, uh, you know, a 24 year vet of the trades, uh, started out in a family owned residential heating and air conditioning business. How I began in that business was a little different. I was just chasing a girl. So <laughs> oh. uh, that girl ended up becoming my wife. Um, so her Good father move, owned the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how I fell into the trades. I'm not a stranger to the trades though, but for sure. My, my stepfather was a entrepreneur as well, but he was more on the grading and the landscaping side of the industry. So I've never been a stranger to work. So chasing the girl landed a uh, future father-in-law that owned the HVAC business and kind of fell in love with it. They started from the ground floor, literally the crawl space floor actually. Yeah. So when you ended up joining your father-in-law's company, where did you start and how did you progress further into your career? And then um, now. where yep. you are now? Yeah. I started uh, fetching tools. So give me this, give me that. And I went from that to uh, install service sales operations. And then cut my teeth with some friends on the commercial side for a while, uh, because I always wanted to learn that side of the business as well. So with that, I um, joined a very large, large platform commercial business to uh, learn projects and different work there. And then that's how I actually got connected with Blue On. Mm -hmm. So that team was actually using Blue On on a very rapid, you know, rate because commercial has a lot of fragmented sides to it. But inside there, that data was important. So I got introduced there and had my teams actually using it. And then I got connected with our CEO, Peter, through that. And, and we just knew that we had to work together at some point. We just didn't know how at that point, but that's okay. How. So the, I just learned this recently. Your father-in-law's business, the family business, y'all, it's still alive and well. It so is. you just, you know, sometimes you have to do that to like step out and maybe what I'm gathering is maybe stepped out to get a little more experience mm -hmm. that would further the long game, right? That's kind of what I envision is what you did. Like stepped out of the family business to go get more experience for the long game for the family. But then you end up at Blue On. But have I only ever known you from Blue On? I guess, right? I think so. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously being all the events and different things and obviously, uh, you know, on my side, that blew on really intimate 
intimately involved with all the contractors and what's going on with their teams and their technicians and you know what we I felt can like do. I was friends with you on Facebook forever and then one day he's like hey when are you quality going to start using blue on and I'm like what do you mean I thought you were yeah. a contractor <laughs> and he's no. like talk to me about blue on I'm like wait well, I wasn't on the same page yeah so that's the unique thing there so you know social media I've always I've never been a stranger to mm -hmm. uh, connecting with people and learning from those that I wanted to, uh, you know, strive to be like, or, you know, learn different pieces to the puzzle. Right. So mm -hmm. inside there, I mean, you know, some of my greatest industry friends have came from not only meeting at these events, but also meeting online and just, mm -hmm. you know, not being afraid to, you know, step out of the box and ask those questions, you know, Hey, I'm struggling here. What did you do to get there? You know, mm -hmm. and just go there. Yeah. That's actually one of my biggest hopes for the industry is that more people just, you know, get outside their ego and do it more. Yeah. Amen to that. Right. right. So. What have you seen um, as far as technology growth in your time in the trades before it blew on? Ooh, yeah, we were, I mean, 24 years in. So I've seen a lot. I mean, it was pen and paper and then it was you know, people were using what success were and then mm -hmm. Titan came in and, you know, I connected with those guys and I've had conversations with Aura and all of them when they were like really small and then all the way through. I mean, so technology, I think, you know, I kind of chime in. One of my close friends, Landon Brewer, is uh, pretty key to drop some some golden nuggets. And he's absolutely right. Like our, our space is in a renaissance of technology and innovation. It's mm -hmm. just really finding the right fit at the right time for that company to be able to take that and be able to excel in the process of it. I think our industry is a lot like the world in and, you know, like we have the boomers, we have what's next and then the young generations. Right. So we're kind of generationally split even in our industry. So often what happens is, you know, we have employees that are maybe older and have adapted into technology and done fine. But then and Oscar, I always give him a hard time because he's 47 and I'm always like. Are you going to be able to do that? And he's like, yes, you know, whatever. But even I can think about like when the beginning of our company, when we were on pen and paper and talking to him and I'm like, hey, we need to find a software because I'm eight years younger than him. So immediately I'm going like, there's an easier way to do this. Right. But I had to show him the why and, and make it make sense. But we still have a big portion of our, our industry that thinks that way still. So I think some people say or like to think that our industry hasn't evolved in technology as much as I think it actually has. It really has. I think so too. And just in the last 10 years, I've seen like rapid acceleration in technology may, being brought into our industry. I mean, where we were, I think in the industry, even six years ago is mm -hmm. nowhere near where everybody is now. And we're talking about, you know, artificial intelligence coming in and, you know, how that's being utilized in our industry. And then, you know, Blue On is another example mm -hmm. of, you know, the industry changing faster and faster. And like you said, Cassie, the younger generation is quicker at it than, than the older generation. But the open-mindedness to be, you know, willing to take a look at what it can do, I think is going to put companies, you know, ahead of the game as far as um, sure. being able to transition into the new technology and to be able to pivot in, in our businesses faster and quicker than those who are not adopted adopting the newer technology. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing there is that you see no matter it's a veteran technician or even a younger technician is the technology or the, the innovation that comes into play. If they're building that process for both of those in mind, that's really where you find a winning combination because, you know, the veteran guys are good at, you know, knowing all the information and storing it in their brain. Mm -hmm. Some of them are great at teaching it to the youngers, mm -hmm. but some of them are not. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to find that marriage in between there for the veteran guys, but the young guys, you know, and gals, they excel at so any when it comes to technology. Yeah. And I can tell you, we got to go, we got to talk in a second what Blue On is, especially for our listeners who don't know. But I can tell you that Oscar was Blue On for quality. <laughs> Before we had Blue On, Oscar was Blue On. And that's what initially when Logan started talking to us about Blue On, and he's like, no, your guys won't have to call anyone at your office anymore. <laughs> they can call us or right. use the master tech to 
yep. to message in, or it's AI, right? But we've they've yep. built the AI. And I think our techs didn't trust it at first. And so we just basically like ripped the bandaid off and was like, hey, and we and then knowing you can see it. So so let's pause there so I can I'll be able to jump back and talk more about our experience with it. But can you tell our listeners what Blue On is? Yeah. So in the simplest form, I mean, we are a data and support company for technicians and contractors to be able to accelerate their productivity and their actual billable efficiency in the field. Getting them the support when they need it and the data that they, when they need it is a key piece to the puzzle to be able to make sure that they're not taking other team members offline and they're right. actually being more efficient in the field. Well, mm-hmm. and I think you hit the nail on the head saying billable efficiency because mm-hmm. those of us who have been in the industry a long time, how many times does Oscar or you know any of the field supervisors get phone calls from technicians saying, well, I've been I've been on hold with support for an hour and a half. And That's like, an hour and a half of lost time. And all of the business owners are just like making fists and, and frustrated mm-hmm. over you invest so much money in the equipment for the brand that you're selling, wh- whether you're private label or whether you're selling one of the, the other brands that are out there. But when there's an issue or you get something from the factory that's got a problem and then you're at the customer's home and trying to get everything fixed and you're getting nowhere with support, that drives your billable efficiency right into the toilet. That's right. Yeah. 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 It kills, it kills a lot of things all in one, you know, not only does it kill the demeanor of that technician while they're trying to focus on getting that thing fixed, but it also really affects the conversation after the fix. Right. So if that technician is going in to communicate with that, that customer about what they just found, how well do we really think it's going in the, in the home when they feel defeated before they get there? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a big thing that we're seeing a kind of paradigm shift to where, you know, as long as they can get unstuck, then those sides of the business on the communication side can really accelerate and be able to help on that side. Yeah, I can see that too, because even for any job, if you end up hitting a brick wall, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you know, field technicians, you know, even office employees, you hit a brick wall, phones go down or something and you're dead in the water. It brings the whole morale down. Right. So where I can say from like our side, our perspective, right, is Oscar is a master troubleshooter. And he's really humble, but I will call him that. You know, I know I've listened to this man troubleshoot people nationwide, you know, friends through the industry. They know that if they need something, Oscar can typically figure it out for him over the phone. And so our technicians know that and they've relied on him. And that's great. And he's still available. But sometimes, you know, especially when your technician count grows so high and then your install the same, it kind of becomes a lot for one person. And so we were wondering, you know, hey, how would that look if they felt like they couldn't call Oscar? And and in our company, they still can and they do. But we just ask them to try Blue On first to see if it gives them something. Because sometimes, you know, as dispatchers, you can normally see like if the technician has started down a wrong rabbit hole, like the last three jobs were a capacitor and you're like, man, I don't know, you know, or and so it's like, hey, throw that your question or what you're looking at into the master tech is that's what it's called, right? Master Tech? Master, master Mechanic. But yeah, Master, yeah, mechanic. master Tech. Um, so. um, blue On and see what it gives you. And I've been able to do that because I have my own Blue On account. And so I do that sometimes too, just to act like I know what I'm talking about. And I'll be like, hey, I'm looking at a, you know, 58 STA furnace. And 58 STA is old carrier furnace that's probably not carried anymore. But I used to know no nomenclature of carrier. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, and then it'll like, I can't even think of uh, that was the exact scenario that I used to when I typed it in, but I can't remember what I typed, but it gave all these things like, check this, check this, check this. And so when we showed that to our technicians in a training and was like, Hey, if you were at this house and this, this was what was presented to you, what would you have started looking at? And when Blue On gave back all of those answers, they were like, okay, well, maybe I can trust that when I'm in a bind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I mean, the key element there is that the majority of technicians, they're getting stuck, but where they get stuck at a lot of times, it's just that confirmation piece. You know, Mm -hmm. they're going to call Oscar to be able to say, hey, I think I'm on the right path, but I'm a little hesitant before I pull the switch on this next step. I don't want to damage anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times the time that that takes Oscar offline, that's kind of where we're we're that support tool, even for Oscar on the back end too, is because 
call the ones who are fielding those calls. We don't want to take away the calls if that's the process of the team, but we do want to make it more efficient. So if the tech doesn't have to call Oscar because now they feel confident in what the next step is, Mm -hmm. then that allows Oscar to keep driving business and driving revenue his direction. And then the technician gets on what they need to get done. The technician is is gaining confidence in that confirmation from the software mm-hmm. instead of having to call Oscar, where, you know, if the they have the same question three times in a row and they get the same answer, then they're building their own confidence in their skill in the field. Yeah. Now, AI, the master tech, the master mechanic is not the same because if you call Oscar three times in a row with the same problem and you didn't have your meter three times in a row when you got to the furnace to talk to him and he's going to come in a little stronger than the master mechanic. Master mechanic's going to be a little more kind and there's no emotion there. <laughs> well, there's that too. That's a good yeah. point. That's right. Tech, right? I mean, but what technicians see there is that, you know, most technicians, hey, newsflash, everybody, you know, just like we are as operators, you know, technicians are hesitant to ask questions that they need to ask for fear of retribution. They, mm-hmm. They're they like, I don't want to seem dumb by asking mm-hmm. that question. Us as operators, we'll sulk in a defeat of something for months before we reach out to another contractor friend yeah. and be able to help us beyond that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. If we can scale that and just speed that process up, then yeah, they do learn a lot better that way because mm-hmm. technicians nowadays, they index everything. So they want to learn it exactly when they need it the most. And that's how they're actually able to retain that knowledge at a higher rate. Most businesses' online presence is boring. And by being boring, they're losing out on potential sales and customers. Being interesting and exciting is what draws customers in and gets them to buy from you. But it's hard to be interesting online when you're focused on running your business and taking care of your customers. It doesn't have to be this way. We have the key to unlocking the solution to your problem. Key Heart Marketing can help take your business from boring to brilliant on social media. We can vouch for them. They run our podcast socials. If you want to have a strong social media presence that allows customers to know, like, and trust you, connect with Key Heart Marketing at keyheartmarketing.com. Yeah. And so we always forget too that all of these technicians are hands-on learners because that's why they're in our trade. That's like why they're in the industry. They didn't go do something else. Like they, they learn with their hands. And so we've got to teach them by them doing, we're not doing them any favors by just, you know, taking the tool out of their hand and doing it for them. And so that's why I feel like we had been able to create such great technicians because Oscar was doing that on the phone. He was talking to him, but he wasn't taking the tool away and doing it for him where, you know, you've been with someone, you know, your service manager gets in the truck with you and he's like, just let me do it, you know, and we couldn't do that, but we were able to scale quicker, but then it wasn't, sustainable like that wasn't scalable like oscar we couldn't there's only one of oscar there's only one of oscar so blue on is amazing because you can put that in but also we're talking mostly about the master mechanic because there also is phone support right yeah yeah Yeah. there's the phone element and everything as well i mean the master mechanic is actually taking probably about 90 plus percent of our actual call volume on that side which is you know a thing that we saw that was kind of going to come there but we're still there to support on the back in if they need the uh, the phone call to actually talk to a real veteran technician without taking your other team members offline then mm-hmm. there is that availability and they'll get directly to them we have a insanely fast response time compared to most in the industry which is normally five minutes or less but inside there one thing to remember about master mechanic is the element of our ai it's not that it's just rapidly fast and it's always there the key element to our ai tech support is that it was built off the back of our our actual true conversations from veteran technicians, much like Oscar, actually mm-hmm. answering question, answer, solution sets. And that's what we layered into it. So instead of giving that basic chat GPT type answer, which is like a textbook, it actually gives true language that technicians spoke because it's feeding off of those calls. So it's yeah. like having that mentor right in your pocket. Yeah. 
on the live support side, we do have video communication tools inside there to actually have a set of eyes on the job with them. So that greatly increases, you know, productivity and make sure we can get them on and off the job faster. But it is an out cart feature. You know, it's for, you know, 40 bucks per issue, not per call. You're talking about being able to speed them on and off the job and be able to help them out in their time of need. They don't need to be wasting billable time. Yeah. And sometimes having that video call or that phone call of someone that's not been there is so helpful. We just recently had an experience. We inherited a problem. Another local contractor installed a Dike and Fit and they're not a Dike and Fit contractor, but Dike and Fits are great. I have like a lot of them at our house. We love them, but you do have to do the training. And so it got to the point that the uh, previous contractor couldn't do anything. Like they didn't know how to fix it. They didn't reach out to their distributor, our distributor locally, because I don't know why. But anyways, so um, it got to the point that we inherited it and um, we stand behind what we say. We're going to do everything that we can. And so we've been out there, you know, and they are all of our, not all of our texts, but several texts. It was just not like anything we had ever seen before. And some of it was install, right? Yep. That we didn't do, but got to the point that I said, I was talking to Oscar and I said, what if we just have another set of eyes? Like that's not us because we've all, we start chasing a different rabbit. Right. And yep. he's like, that's a good idea, you know? And so it still came down to everything that we were all chasing, but having someone come out, it wasn't at that point, it wasn't blown, but I am sitting here thinking here, like, why didn't we try that? We had the, our distributor come out, one of their the guys that works there, that's a tech come out and they were, our team was still on the right track. Track. But you know, when you start looking at something and you've looked at it a hundred times, and so you still keep staying on that same length, wavelength, I, I think, think you get hyper focused on mm -hmm. the path that you start going down, and then you don't see the outside things. Yeah. Like that, the other things that could be contributing to it. Yeah. That was the greatest factor to us implementing the video technology in the app is because, as technicians, which I used to help on that side as well, on the tech support side too, is that, you know, as technicians, being on the phone, we can hear what they're talking about, we can understand and relate because we've physically been there. We've done that. But the truth is we need to have a set of eyes to be able to see the nuances to a job. So mm -hmm. that's why we deployed that in there. And that's what, you know, really accelerated a lot of things as well, because now you literally have a mentor, you know, right over your shoulder with a set of eyes, what you're looking at. So we can see all the different craziness that we know we find day to day on these yeah. jobs. And you're just like, you wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. And it's like, well, now you get to see it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, there really are things that out there that's like, you know, the guys all the time will tell us a story and I'm like, yep. they're like, you wouldn't believe it unless you were there. And I'm like, no, I believe you. I've seen enough at this point that I believe you. <laughs> yeah. So I used to teach my guys all the time. Hey, guys, you got to zoom out. You got to look outside the box that you're looking at. I want to know about everything outside the box before you start talking yep. about the box. Yep. So, OK, next thing before we got on the call, we kind of were having a, a little pre chat and I side said chat. Well, side chat. I was like, let's say this and we started talking about what the economy and everything is doing to our tr our space right now and we got to talking about service and people being more focused we should be transitioning to being more ser repair focused service focused and not replacement because of financing approvals and all those things so you want to mm -hmm. chime into that logan <laughs> what we're talking yeah, about yeah sure i mean we have seen a large uptick in service related repairs in comparison to replacement and obviously like we were talking about before, there's a tidal wave of things that are, you know, kind of compounding to make that a factor right now for all of us. Call volumes down, financing is a lot tighter, equipment shortages. Equipment you know, shortages are huge. Refrigerant the, change. Yep. Refrigerant changes. The list just goes on and on, right? You know, we've always been, you know, a industry for the past decade or more to where most contractors have been like an 80-20 split, right? So we're 80% installation, 20 percent service, you know, and that's kind of where we're at service maintenance. So the key factor there is, you know, once we start shifting more back to service, we're able to increase the LTV of that customer for one, because we're actually servicing them for a longer rate of time, but they're still going to repair that system that they have. If they don't repair it with you, trust me, they're repairing it with someone else. So if you're only looking for the replacement side, you're kind of putting yourself into a position to where you might run into these speed bumps, I say. Mm -hmm because right. of all the different things going on. Now, do I say we can't sell equipment? No, not at all. I mean, there's mm -hmm. cases where it has to be done, but servicing the equipment is definitely
definitely going to be a thing moving forward that's going to be a much more needed thing because with the A2L changes coming up, there's going to be a lot of back and forth on the communication level with actual warranty and what's approved and what's not approved. The replacement, you know, we're going back to a day of where, you know, forever, if we had a bad compressor, we could just change a condenser and get them back online and we're good. Well, mm -hmm. with the A2Ls, we're not going to be able to do that. So mm -hmm. there's going to be yeah. a, a complete replacement talk. And that's a big, big downside to that. And that's had me all up in a tizzy here recently because, yeah, especially if we've just completely replaced. Now with 410, you know, we're still, we know we're still going to have that a, around for a while, but there's going to be certain scenarios where if we need the compressor, we're not going to be able, yeah, it's just my mind goes in all different places. And then we've told the customer you have a 10 year warranty because we sold that to you. And so now what does that look like? And so my, I'm just trying to let my brain go one thing at a time because of those changes. But like you said, there are a lot of companies who are going to fall down very quickly because they have, they don't know how to service or, and make the repair and respectfully, I don't mean that like disrespectfully at all, but there are a lot of companies who don't know how to do that. And so blue on is going to be a saving grace for a lot of those people in their troubleshooting to be able to still generate revenue. Yeah, for sure. That's all that. On the back end aspect of that is on the business side. I mean, you know, what's better? I mean, are we we're going to carry a smaller margin on an install and tie up days at a time? Or are we going to carry a higher margin on service and be able to do multiples within days mm -hmm. time? So, yeah. I mean, the factor comes into play there on efficiency. And I mean, there is a lot to be said there. And I think that, you know, as this comes on and we learn more and more about the changes coming that, you know, it's going to become a more of a shift for most companies that they're going to have to focus on. And, you know, there's been a lot of change in the industry, you know, a lot of technician learning experiences have gone more to sales conversations, which mm -hmm. like I said, that's, there's ups and downs to that. You know, technicians like to do one thing. They like to fix stuff. Right. So you start taking away the element of fixing things. That's when they start getting uninterested in being a part of, you know, that kind of uh, culture. So, you know, that's one thing that I think is going to help implement and be able to help those throughout that process too. Yeah. I have so many thoughts on that, that we could talk for a while because our industry has changed so much. So I know you're the heat and air vet, right? What about plumbing and electric? Is Blue On ever going to have anything that would mm -hmm. add in those things? I think the next closest okay. thing would be probably plumbing. I mean, for sure. I mean, we do have a lot of boilers and a lot of, uh, some of them are tank water heaters actually in there now, um, as far as the data mm -hmm. side goes. So you can see all the parts data, um, any known cross references and things like that that's available to that. But I think we've been asked that question so, so many times. We like to say we jumped into the rabbit hole with the toughest one first, which is HVAC, because it's just so fragmented across the board. So the answer is yes, I would say, but when, I'm not sure. I don't know a deadline to that. I can tell you that our plumbers at Quality would be so excited if you had a tankless in there, because that is our number one problem with tech support through tank. Now, some of the tech support is you have to still go through them. I think Navian's one of them, right? Like you still have to go through them and go through it. But sometimes it wasn't in warranty anyways, and it didn't matter. And then you're still on the phone forever. And so it's like um, having that extra, that other person or that technology to maybe try. I never thought about trying, having them try in the master mechanic now just to see what it already knows. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, you would be surprised. I mean, there's there's roughly like 70,000 boilers, I believe, model numbers of boilers we have inside there. And one key factor to Master Mechanic is we're getting ready to launch, you know, some data sets as far as all that OEM data that we have that we give back to the contractors as well. It's actually getting ready to be plugged into Master Mechanic. So now you can actually start asking questions specific to model numbers. It's going to give you specific details on that particular piece of equipment, um, warranty related uh, issues, different things that are going on. Um, but one of the highlights too, is that, you know, our OCR 
AR technology, our scan tool, to where they can literally just take a picture of the data plate, take them to the data. Here in about a month or so is getting ready to launch out, you know, the warranty aspect of it. So is that piece of equipment under warranty? Is it not? You know, what's the likelihood of that? The only nuance inside that is, you know, the registration piece of it. We can give a guided, hey, you're going to be able to see if it has up to 10 years, but the manufacturer side is five unless it was registered. So we're going to be building more and more upon that. But yeah, that's a very short fashion. That's going to be inside the mobile app. Cool. What is the three to five year vision for Blue One? Where does Blue One want to take this thing? I mean, the vision for us is pretty simple too. I mean, you know, we don't want to get away in the way of the process of a contractor or technician. So we have to follow the flow of their day to day to be able to be a fully functional tool that helps them in their time of need. So with that, we are starting to do integration with uh, FSM. So, you know, your people like Service Titan, House Call Pro, Sarah, you know, those to where our data and support tools are going to be right there in their daily mm -hmm. flow when they need it. But also on the back end of that is our distribution partnerships that we're working integration with now as well. So we've got the largest cross-reference tool in all of HVAC and it's it's helped distribution for a long time, as well as now being in the hands of contractors, which for the very first time, that wall has been kind of taken down to where they can have all that data in one place. But inside of integration, what we're actually working on there is empowering their either their commerce or their actual brick and mortar solutions to where a contractor can actually utilize their actual commerce solution and be able to uh, ramp up procurement times. So inside there, that's launching out as we speak right now. But the true vision behind that is once we can get to actual true price and availability on parts and materials, then we can actually be able to help the FSM sides be able to integrate maintaining real margin and making sure that, you know, you're getting the right parts at the right need, but we're also streamlining those price books um, to make sure that they're accurate on point and you're maintaining, like I said, all the profit you deserve. Yeah, Do you think we'll ever key. see a technician pro? <laughs> service titan that's funny uh i don't <laughs> know if it's going to be a technician pro i think there were a lot of pro products launched for sure that we see yeah, yeah. Uh, there's definitely some things that are coming that are going to be pretty cool mm -hmm. i don't know per se if it would be technician pro hey i just want to make sure that we since this is live and recorded that if that ever becomes a thing that blue on and service titan have some type of mingling connection it is named technician pro i would like someone to say that cassie pound named that <laughs> Yes, anyway. Maybe you can speak on stage. Apparently. I'll just be like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's you, can awesome. the one, you can be the one to introduce it to everyone. Yeah, right. I'm going to be like, all right, you just step aside. No big deal. <laughs> hey, I am just joking, but I'm a fan of all the pro products. If you've heard me talk on the podcast a lot, we're Service Titan. Heather's our CFO. And I think whenever she came in, she was like, probably like, good Lord, you're payment to service titan but our no comment on that yeah right she's like ma'am our we're bought into all the pro products and so i mean little side note we use phones pro we use pricebook pro we use marketing pro and i'm intrigued about sales pro but i can show the story of how the growth with those pieces of technology have helped quality grow and i think that's the same of blue on and helping quality grow and our technicians grow well we greatly greatly appreciate Appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, that's our honor. We thoroughly enjoy just being able to help contractors and technicians there. And we understand, I mean, a lot of us here, like I said, we're not, we're not all a bunch of technology junkies. We are, but you know, a lot of us, we were from the industry. We know the struggles we've dealt with it ourselves. So we know the different elements to be able to help you know, be able to streamline those technicians and, and the part side of it, which is a complete other disaster. Yeah. Well, yeah. cool. Well, thank you for, um, jumping on with us today. Thanks for being an advocate for us as well. I know that you're not the typical guest of Power Women of the Trades podcast, but you are an advocate for women in the space. And I can say that I've witnessed that um, anytime that I've thrown anything at you or asked for help with anything, you have always been there. And so I would just like to say thank you for continuing to support the women in our space and the future of our trades. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah. I mean, if it, you know, I come from a, well, on the family business, 
business side, it was pretty easy for me too. So full disclosure, you know, my, my wife's family, there's five daughters Mm -hmm. and then my father-in-law. So, you know, he was a woman of the trades man for a very long time because he had all those women in the trades with him too. A lot of the daughters did work in the business as well. So with that, I was just inundated with females running stuff all the time. So I get to see the power of what they can do. And I will tell you, they're a hell of a lot more organized than we are. So yeah. if it wasn't for them, <laughs> it would be a mess. Yeah. Well, quality is very similar to that. There is yep. a lot of women yep. running different pieces and, of quality. So. And thankfully, Oscar was understanding of that, what, how that was helpful. Not everyone gets it, though. Not yeah. everyone does. So well, I'm sure between Haley or between Kaylee and, you know, and Hannah on the back end and everybody mm-hmm. else, you know, they're straight in Oscar out. Yeah, you're right on Haley, too. Haley, the hey. little boss, little nine-year-old boss. Yeah. Little boss lady. <laughs> everybody out. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's the cheerleader for the trades. That's yeah, right. that's for sure. So, yeah. all right, Logan. Thank you so much, Logan. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us this morning. And hopefully we see you next week in Orlando. We are, as we're recording this, watching Milton come in. And so um, the plan is to see you at Service World Expo, but we will touch base. And if not, we'll see you down the road. And we appreciate you. Yeah. Hope, hopes and uh, thoughts and prayers for Florida. I know it's going to be a tough one, but hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Can. Absolutely. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. This has been Power Women of the Trades. Like what you hear so far? Leave us a review at Apple. And make sure to listen to our other episodes wherever you enjoy listening to your podcasts. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you on the next one.